Hello everyone, and welcome back to an introduction to programming remaster. So far, we've gone over many foundational topics to computer science. If you've missed any of our previous videos, check the playlist in the description. In today's episode, we will be going over arrays. We've already talked about variables and how useful they can be for storing singular pieces of data, allowing us to reference and manipulate information at any place in our program. However, Variables have a drawback in that they can only store one singular piece of data of a specific type. Imagine you're making an app in which the user creates a shopping list. There's no simple way to store this list in a variable. You may consider using a string and storing each item separated by a comma, but separating this list into its component items would require some mildly complicated code, and so too would adding or removing items from the list. It would be much more convenient if each item was stored individually as a component of the list, but also together as one list, so that we may easily search for, add, and remove items. This is where arrays come in. An array is, essentially, a list. Each array may store one type of data in it, be it an array of ints, an array of strings, or even a multi-dimensional array of arrays, but we will get into that soon. Programmers use arrays when they want to store multiple related pieces of data together, like a grocery list or a list of high scores in a game. Arrays are super useful when programmers want to store a collection of information that can be easily searched through and edited. There are many different, relatively quick ways to search for specific elements in even very large arrays. As an example, Imagine you're a startup company that owns an app with 100,000 users. When a new user registers for your app, they have to create a username. Your program then checks the array of all of the usernames that are registered. And if the new user's potential username has been taken already, then the user must select a new username. Otherwise, you would simply add the new user's username to that array and register the user. Using an array in this way allows you to search through a huge quantity of data relatively quickly, which is much easier than if each new username was stored in a separate variable and not together in one array. Now, a very important concept to understand is how you search through an array to reference and manipulate its elements. To begin, let's create an example array called numbers, which simply stores the integers one through 10. You can see the array represented on the screen now. So how exactly do we reference a specific element of this array? Well, this is done simply by writing the name of the array, numbers, followed by square brackets containing the index of the element we are trying to reference. However, keep in mind that arrays are zero indexed. That means one, which is located at the first location in our array, is actually located in the zeroth spot and would be referenced as shown on screen now. 2 is located at index 1, 3 at index 2, and so on. This is very important to keep in mind when you're working with arrays so that you can reference things properly. Additionally, if you try to reference the 10th index in the array, you will get an error as this value is out of bounds. The numbers array has 10 spots, meaning its maximum index is 9 and thus there doesn't exist a 10th index. Another important thing to understand about arrays is how their sizes work. When you create an array, you can do it in either one of two ways. Firstly, you can populate the array right there and then, an example of which is shown on screen now. In this case, you are simply manually setting the elements and their locations initially in this array. Secondly, you can create an empty array and set a maximum size for it. This allocates a spot in the memory for the array at the exact size that you have set, no more and no less. This is great as it allows us to fill up the array as we go on. However, it has a downside in that you cannot increase the size of the array later on if you want to add more elements to it. Think of this as creating a bookshelf to store books. When you want to place another book in it after it has reached maximum capacity, you won't be able to, as there simply isn't any space left. This is similar to arrays, in that once we have populated an array with elements up to its limit, we can't simply put any more elements in it without removing some. Keep this in mind when creating and using arrays, 
as setting too small a size will lead to an error in your code if you try to add too many elements, whereas too great a size wastes some of your computer's memory. In most cases, the extra memory usage will be hardly noticeable. However, if you create a very large amount of larger than required arrays, you could run into issues, as your code wouldn't be very optimized, and would have trouble running when memory is tight. Furthermore, when you initialize an array, you have to choose right then and there what kind of data is going to be stored within it. As said before, each array stores one type of data, whether it be an int array, a string array, or what have you. You cannot mix and match, so be sure to set your array correctly and only attempt to store the correct data type within it. Before, we briefly mentioned the idea of arrays in arrays. This can get a little complex, but arrays can be multidimensional. An array filled only with primitive data types, or a typical array, is called a one-dimensional array. If you have an array of arrays, that will be a two-dimensional array. An array of arrays of arrays is a three-dimensional array, and so on. This can go on and on with more and more dimensions that you can't really easily conceptualize. However, to get the point across, look at the two-dimensional array on screen now. It's an array where each element is another array, and these arrays are filled with integers. Now to reference a piece of data in a two-dimensional array, you need to use two indices. The first index refers to the index of the array in which the data is located in, and the second index tells you the index of that piece of data in that array. This highlighted integer value 2 would be referenced at 3, 2, and this red highlighted 6 would be referenced at 4, 4. For three-dimensional arrays, you would need three indices to reference the data point, and with four-dimensional arrays, you would need four indices, and so on. Multi-dimensional arrays have many different uses, for instance, representing grids or locations in a 3D space. That just about does it for arrays for this video. Arrays are an extraordinarily important way to store data, and as such, there is much more advanced information on them than we have covered here. But as this series only seeks to teach the basic ideas and concepts that are necessary for implementing these topics, we are stopping here for this video. If you would like more details on arrays, and some more advanced data structures, click the link in the description for the arrays video in our data structures series, as well as the playlist containing the rest of the videos in that series. If you enjoyed the video, consider dropping a like and subscribing, so that you don't miss our new videos coming out in the future. With that said, thank you for watching.